Hi, hello. Welcome to this uh, laboratory session. In this exercise, we are going to be uh, playing a little understanding what are variables in the context of uh, our visual novels with uh, fungus, with Unity fungus. As you know, all fungus uh, commands are available through tools, fungus, and then you can create a new flowchart. If you open flowchart uh, window, you might be able to see the diagram of blocks that is part of our game. So right now, forget about the visualization and just go to create a new uh, uh, branching narrative. Here you would observe there is a little uh, a window, a little section that's called, that is called variables. If you select the plus, the addition, you can uh, add here different kinds of variables. When you select one, like for example, let's start with Boolean. You would see that adds automatically that uh, variable here in the flowchart as a property of the flowchart. You would see as well that by default it's private. Okay. Uh, if you uh, select public, this can be accessed by other flowcharts. Okay. And if you access, uh, if you select global, this would be automatically, uh, you know, available in all, uh, you know, flowcharts that you create in the future. Very important in all variables are always to create the right names. Try to create names that can help you to identify the variables. So it is common, for example, to use things like bar, boolean. Okay, that way you indicate that this is a variable and this boolean, and then you can add another description. Like for example, cake. What you can see as well is that the variable has a checkbox here. This indicates the value that the variable has as default, as default value. Okay, so check is true and check is false. You can create as well a float for example, the same. I can add a float, and the float can be a float, you know, and it could be something like time, okay? And again, the value by default can be anything. Remember the float uh, admits uh, decimal, so it could be something like 0.5, okay? That, that would be the value by default. Integers, okay? integer and this could be decision for example a string obviously it refers to a string value so it could be for example something like name okay string name okay being the default value something like player one and can be maybe changed by any other value that we can think of this is uh, what we have to remember when we add new variables, okay? Just go to variable and add as many as you're going to need. Another uh, different issue would be what we do with these variables. So remember that when you go to the flow chart, you can select a block and then in inspector, you can add different commands. So there is a whole set of uh, values that is associated to uh, these uh, variables, okay? So if you go here, you will have delete save key uh, from a string, low variable, random float, random integer, all these different elements. So we're going to see some examples of that now in our examples of how to use variables in narrative. I will show you some examples of how to use variables uh, within a narrative. These are only examples to show you the potential uh, usefulness. These are only examples to give you ideas or to make you understand better what a variable can do. Of course, you are free to explore any other use of the variables and uh, share with the rest what you could uh, think of in terms of the, you know, how the variable could be expanding the narrative.
if you see here, uh, I created the uh, different variables from the uh, previous part of this exercise. So as we have commented before, we have uh, different kinds of variables. For this example, I created the boolean, the float, the integer, and the string. Remember, it's very uh, easy to commit mistakes with the names. Uh, just see here, I put floor instead of float. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I mean, uh, well, uh, you see before in other examples how you create uh, menus. So I created a menu with three options. Three options which are first one, an example of a Boolean. The second one, an example of an integer. And the third one, it's an example of the use of floats. If you play the game, you can see actually the only thing it displays is nothing in this block and then goes directly to the menu, the menu of the three options. Let's, ex let's start with the first uh, of these. Let's start with the first of these options, the example of Boolean. So if you click on it, you would say you would see that uh, let's start with this. Let's start with the first example of this, uh, the boolean. When you click on this block, you would see uh, that you have a say, okay, the wolf communicating that it's very hungry, okay. Then you would have two options. The, the option you as first character would be to give a cake or not to give a cake. Okay, you can obviously always add to this the option of saying something while you give the, the key. Okay, but that that's, doesn't really change uh, our script right now. Okay, so uh, option one and option two. If you do everything on branching narrative, uh, you will have two different options and that would create a whole system of trees. If you work only with branches, uh, with, uh, you know, options, you will have to create a whole different set of branches that would be created after the decision of uh, giving the cake. While if you choose the other, it will create another different branch. Okay. Well, one of the advantages of using variables is precisely to simplify these kind of things. You could have perfectly uh, these two options, because obviously the options are, are rendered in the format of different boxes, so you cannot change that. But as far as you use the menu instead of another way of, of choosing options, of course. But uh, if you use the menu, it creates two blocks of text, the two options, and then later you can perfectly create another block where these two convert. In that third one is where we are going to establish or uh, a decision. Or decision it means uh, we'll say one month later the wolf and the red little riding hood uh, uh, meets again, they meet again. And then uh, depending on if the girl was generous or not there would be uh, different consequences. So for that, in give cake, we set the variable as cake uh, true. Okay, uh, the girl gave the cake. The cake. In the other option, the boolean is false. The girl didn't give the the cake. Okay. So let's see how does it works. How does it work? Sample boolean, and then if you give the cake, you will see that automatically it changes the value to true. So the the wolf is grateful. Everything is alright. However, if you are uh, not that generous. the consequences can be a little more dramatic. This is uh, very easy to find in, uh, in other games, no? Remember this idea of the Telltale games of uh, someone will remain, remember that, no? 
This is similar to other uh, commercial games like the Telltale series when a character, you know, uh, says, so, well, not the character, the narrator says, this character will remember that. Okay? So, actually, uh, we don't need to create a whole set of branches. We just need to uh, create that value and then later establish decisions depending on that value. What about the second example? the integers. In this example, when I select integer, I created a random integer. That means, I uh, hope you can see that here, okay, I created a, a value between 1 and 100. This is similar to the role-playing games when we have a dice. Okay, so basically what we are doing is selecting randomly a value between 1 and 100. So the text will present the narrator again one month later, blah, blah, blah. But then later, if, and I say, if that value that has been selected randomly is less than 30, then there would be a positive consequence. I'm still grateful, how can I help? If, on the other hand, uh, that is else, of course, uh, that value is more than 30, then it will select you a stinking rat. I think today I'm not going to eat cake, but little girl pie, okay, you know, the negative consequences. The thing is, uh, when uh, you think about that, uh, this gives us the possibility of uh, create different options that are not equally uh, likely. Okay, for example, uh, 30 versus 70. This is a percentage. Uh, I created a narrative where, in the 70% of the times, the uh, wolf is aggressive, instead of a bar of a narrative where uh, only well, or saying that in another in another way, uh, I created a narrative where the 30% of the times the wolf is friendly. Finally, we have the third example with the float. Okay, in this case, remember floats are variables that allows the use of decimals. So uh, this is usually more useful in other kinds of uh, operations. Like for example, when you have to calculate the distance or the time or things where exactitude is important or when you have to operate uh, different variables, calculate a new variable as an effect or as a product of other variables. So for example, if you have to do a division, the result needs to be float. And in many languages, you really need to transform the variables into floats before uh, performing the action. In this example, uh, because I'm only working with narrative consequences and I'm not working author on other aspects like, uh, for example, dragging objects or clicking on objects, uh, I'm going to uh, use a very specific kind of example where I use the value of float as part of the text. So I created a random float. This random float, uh, I say, but this is totally random, okay, to say between uh, 2.2 or 10, which it is assumed to be 10.0, but even if you write the 0.0, it will be automatically, uh, you know, uh, understood as 10, unless you, you create here, uh, okay, another, yeah, it just, put 0.5 okay uh, yeah just add uh, another number maybe if you want after the variable is selected randomly uh, what I do is to transform that float into a string okay so I say whatever is the value of this float this specific one it will be transformed into the value of this uh, older variable, which is a string, okay? It will replace the value of the variable. Uh, if you have noticed before, uh, the value is player one, okay? It doesn't really matter because it's going to be uh, replaced 
by uh, this other value, okay? So it doesn't really matter the default value, which is here, okay? So what I'm going to do is to transform that into a string. And once it is a string, the only thing I have to do is to mention that using this syntaxis, okay? Uh, this uh, parenthetical quotation and then uh, the dollar symbol and the name of the variable. And that way I'm saying you have exactly so let's check uh, how does it work, this uh, integer behavior, one month later. And if you see here, it's already set up the value and it's 79. Okay, so remember, it will be much more likely that the wolf is aggressive than it is friendly. If you play a game, it, the result might be different or might not. And if you see that, now the integer is very low, so positive result yes uh, it's a matter of luck just that let's see this example of float how it works it has created the, the value already it has been transformed into a string and it says you have exactly 7.0.5 well that is just a little example of how to use uh, this option of transforming a float into a string doesn't seem to be uh, more useful than it is fun well this is uh, now uh, all for today we are going to be working with all the kinds of uh, elements and variables and uh, different commands within fungus in next in the next lesson take care